Uh, now, guys, can we go back to the Adam Good story? Why not? Because mm. beneath all the heat that's, it, that has been generated this week, it seems to have centred on two main arguments against him. The problem is that they don't really stack up, and that's something we should talk about. Argument number one goes something like this. It's not racist to boo Adam because his Australian of the Year acceptance speech was divisive and afterwards he called Australia Day Invasion Day. Let's have a look at what he said. It is Invasion Day, it is Survival Day, it's all of those things um, to Aboriginal people. We should celebrate our um, European ancestry because it's a big part of who we are. But we also, as all Australians, should celebrate our 40,000 year history of Indigenous culture and heritage. How radically divisive. Let's hear more. I believe we are all connected, whether we like it or not. We are all equal and the same in so many ways. But the second argument, which is the one that's really at the centre of all this, goes like this. Singling out a girl for public humiliation like that, I thought was wrong, and if Adam Good said it was wrong, I think uh, he'd be a, a superstar. All right, sounds serious. So let's have a look at this humiliation. It starts with a 13-year-old girl calling a proud Indigenous man an ape during a match, a racial insult that Adam Goods chose not to ignore. It was shuddering. I, I turned around and when I saw it was a young girl, I was just like, really? I was just like, how could that happen? Um, and I'm still shuddered. Um, personally, it's, yeah, it's tough. So clearly he's hurt. And the girl clearly suffered. She was marched out by security. Her picture was plastered across the media. She was interviewed by the police. But here's the thing. Adam Goods didn't do any of that. He didn't tell the security guards what to do. He's not a media editor. He doesn't run the police. But I can tell you this. When the police asked him if he wanted to press charges, he very quickly said no. Then, the next day, he said this. It's not her fault. She's 13, she's still so innocent. I don't put any blame on her. She would have no idea, you know, how it makes anyone feel by calling them an ape. The person that needs the most support right now is the little girl. Later, she rang him and apologised. He accepted the apology and then he tweeted this. Just received a phone call from a young girl apologising for her actions. Let's support her, please. This has to be the kindest humiliation in history. Look, we all make mistakes. I make lots of them. I intend to make many more. But I can only hope that the next time I stuff up and someone wants to humiliate me, they do it in the way that Adam Goods did. Later, that girl wrote Adam Goods a letter saying this. It was good to talk on the phone. I'm sorry for being racist. I didn't mean any harm. And now I'll think twice before I speak. What a great outcome. What a great example of leadership and education and bringing people together. And wouldn't it have been great if it ended there? But it hasn't. And one of the main reasons it hasn't is that people keep making these kinds of arguments based on made-up facts. Look, you're entitled to whatever view you like on this. I'm not even trying to change it. But if you really think that Adam Goods is such a monster, why should you have to rewrite history to prove it?